Hmm. It's a nice jazzy chord that he ended there with, don't you think? It's like walking into a Wild West saloon. What? That's record. Why? Because of all the plinky plonky piano. Yeah. Yeah, that was Ben Fold 5, incidentally, with Army. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. I'm Adam. Hello, I'm Joe. You're changing your headphones there. Yeah, they didn't work the first ones. That's better. I've got some headphone problems as well, actually. Good morning, listeners. We hope you're having a, a lovely Saturday morning so far. It's only just started, so if, if something's gone really wrong, don't worry about it too much. <laughs> really? What? Yeah. What if they've, like, fallen over and broken their legs? Don't worry about it too much. Oh, yeah. Just... Just grin and bear it. That's a good idea. Hobble to the breakfast table and have some brekkie. With broken legs. Broken leg brekkie. When would they go to the hospital around about? Just don't. Really? Just, yeah. Just, uh, get over it. Just grit your teeth and get over it. Grit don't be a wussy. Grin and bear it. Yeah. Why not go and see the new Mackenzie Crook film? Why not go and see, uh, Twice Not Out, or whatever it's called? Three Times Not Out. Or just get some of that new age medicine. And rub it on your legs. Yeah, get someone to wave some seaweed over them. <laughs> yeah, They'll soon it. fix. Or listen, uh, you could do some homemade acupuncture. All you need is, uh, some safety pins. Just pop a couple in your, yeah. in the broken or legs. Or get Dr. Buckles to come round and reset them. Dr. Buckles will do it. <laughs> I've got gaffer tape. What's the big problem? <laughs> he can gaffer the legs I up. I can gaffer them it's up. It's fine. I can use, um, you know, lolly sticks. So, uh, I've got an embarrassing confession to make, listeners. Already? Yeah, I've I've had to call off Song Wars this week. Oh, I thought we should get this out yeah. in the open earlier rather than later, because I just went off on holiday. You had a mini break. Didn't I had you? a mini break, and I emailed Adam and said, "Look, we let's just not do Song Wars because I'm off on holly goals." Wins an award, <laughs> and then he goes on a mini break. Complacency. It's laurel resting. Yeah. Uh, so it's my all my fault. Is it? Have you done some things anyway? Well, I did a thing anyway, but it's a bit, it's a bit nuts. That's, nuts is good. Anything's good. Uh, so, you know, it's a kind of a, like a chocolate bar start to this. So there we go. And nuts and... We'll, we'll be, you'll be unveiling your thing later. Might be unveiling the thing, yeah. yeah. Plus great music, of course. Uh, Text the Nation is, is present and correct, as usual. But before we get into all that, let's have some more music. Is this a, 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 an acronym, SIA, or is this SIA? SIA. SIA. I should have known that. She's been around for a while now, but this is The Girl You Lost. That's Sia with The Girl You Lost. Her voice was going all over the place there. She, she's got a very good one. I'm walking away! That single's released on the 21st of April, and she's playing at the Crawdaddy in Dublin tonight. So if you're in Dublin and you like the sound of that, you can get on down to that. Get on down to the Crawdad. Uh, have you seen the advert with Andy McDowell stick in it? Where she rubs the stuff on her faces. Yeah, it's for yeah. Revitalift Deep Set Wrinkle Cream. I have seen that. And, uh, I just like the the way she, she talks about it. She says, there are some wrinkles that age you more than others <gasps> that are noticeable even from a distance. Oh, no. I call them my life storylines. <laughs> And so, because the whole thing is about her being a famous film mm. actress, yes? Mm -hmm. So, uh, it is revealed that she has little euphemistic names for all her physical blemishes, which are a little bit like film terms. Ooh. You see? Does she, does she talk about more than one of them in the advert, or are you just extrapolating? I'm extrapolating, yeah. From that one one? Yeah, I would think, because she is, a, you know, she's a fa famous film lady. My life storyline. My life, they're not wrinkles! They're not wrinkles! They're my life storyline. Go on then, what else have you come up with? I haven't come up with that much, I was hoping you might be able to help me, because you're Dr. Films, you know all about that's film things. That's true. And, uh, you know, you, you, you know all the terminology and the lingo. Yeah, but that's not the title of a film. But I was thinking... Oh, life storylines. Like, you mean that might be a, a no, phrase it's... that a casting agent might use when casting her? She has fantastic life storylines. Well, I was thinking, you know, a storyline, right? That's just a very basic oh, movie I get term. you. You see? So she's kind of incorporating it. They're my life storylines. <laughs> well, I can think of some connotations for first draft. <laughs> <laughs> if maybe she's a bit windy. I was thinking, like, uh, maybe um, from now on I'm going to call my fat tummy my MacGuffin. That's good, a good idea, you know? Yeah. I don't call my... Sometimes I have uh, fatness blemishes that can be seen from a distance. I like to call them my MacGuffins. That's good. I mean, unfortunately... She could there's... advertise Wendy's as well. Wendy's, right? The first draft can be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the second draft empties the room. You, you have... need Wendy's. You have to persevere. Don't be upset if the first draft upsets everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's possible. Just try again. Uh, have you ever referred to your wrinkles? I mean, are you worried about deep-set wrinkles there? Uh, I've got a couple by my eye. 
You need some Revitalift, uh, maybe, maybe, or, or or some Andy McDowell stick uh, to sort you out. Young Knives. Yeah. Now I chose this one for you, listeners. This is the Young Knives, and this is track one from their new album, Super Abundance, which has one of the one of the most boring uh, covers at the moment. It's just a sort of picture in a big dark studio of a motorbike boring boring but is a wicked album really good i mean their first one was good and the second one's amazingly good it's like hit after hit on there and this is track one always good to have an uh, you know it's important to have a, a strong track one this is called fit for you uh yeah i understand exactly what you're saying flavor flav something about uh the terminator being in effect mm. and um, effect. Uh, there's some lyrics in there that are a little bit spicy, aren't there? Bum rush the show. Bum rush the show. Pissing in your pants. Is that what it says? Mm. Spicy stuff. You know. Ay caramba. Ay caramba. Because that is near the knuckle for Saturday morning. No one wants to be reminded of that whole business. No. Of the whole business with the pants. No. So, <laughs> hello listeners. This is Adam and Joe. You're listening to BBC Six Music. That was Public Enemy. What was that one called? Uh, Rebel Without a Pause. Of course it was, you know. Um, if you were listening last week... You will remember that we were trying to provoke a feud with the program Top Gear. Now, this is a classic way to elevate your uh, profile in the media, <laughs> is for a, a small program that doesn't get a lot of attention like this one to engage somehow with a, behemoth. With a, with a much bigger program, like a kind of mollusk on the bum of a whale. Yeah. And uh, so we were attempting to do that by kind of making something out of nothing well, or was it nothing well and this is the question um after we received our massive uh, important award last week just to recap adam went to, we, we made a self-aggrandizing i made a self-aggrandizingly arrogant speech where wherein joe rubbished the competition because we were up against we're uh, already exaggerating we, we were, we're up against uh, people like chris moyles and yeah. the news quiz on radio four and so i said i said no one listens to us you don't know who we are but this proves we're the best show in the world not too much adam goes to the loo encounters hammond the hamster that the, the ham, immortal hamster hammond uh having a wee wee and the top gear producer also having one and they're talking to each other and they're going what do they say they're in mid-conversation they're saying yeah you know they're just rubbishing the competition as if they're like oh buxton comes in buxton comes in hammond says uh, uh, z uh button it anyway so adam assumed that they were you know they disliked my speech thought we were arrogant and and over the top and belittling the competition and then buttoned it as soon as buxton came in so uh we talked about this last week and we got an email didn't we from the producer of top gear uh one of the producers yes yeah. not not one of the people that was there that night he was in a pantomime manner very rewardingly kind of uh making even more of the conflict pat his name was pat yes saying that he was going to get us and stuff like that so this was all very good in a kind of playground sort of a way uh but then after the show and this is the point last week the phone rang <gasps> Because we were just about to leave. We go up after the show, you know, we go upstairs, try and uh, raid all the um, CD boxes and stuff. Uh, mm, free steal CDs. things from other DJs. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. It's fun. And the phone rings and uh, one of our producers, Claire, picked up the phone and it it was uh, Andy Hillman, the producer. He's the big man at the Top big Gear. Man. He he's was the Top Gear. He was the guy that was in the urinal that time. And he's on the phone. So Joe immediately says, we're not here. We're not here. <laughs> <laughs> when Claire says it's Andy, it's Andy from Top Gear. But then, uh, ignoring Joe's instructions, Claire immediately says, yes, they're here, <laughs> to Andy on the phone. So, And so, you take the call, So I, t I took the call. And um, everything was very upbeat on the phone with Andy, and he was nice, and he said, misunderstanding, total misunderstanding. We were talking about something else entirely. We weren't talking about you guys at all. Now, I believe that. And I'm convinced that Adam's overreacting. Not only is he overreacting, but he's overreacting conveniently in a way that makes me look bad. Right. Right. So Adam wins on, but not only can he be indignant and angry, but it's not his fault. I'm convinced he's hallucinated the whole thing. Yeah. It's part of his, your slightly solipsistic bent. You, you think that everything in the world is to do with you. It's my persecution complex and I'm offloading it onto you to make you feel bad. Exactly. So, right. so I'm, con I believe, uh, the producer of Top Gear, <laughs> I, I think it was a miss, it was misconstrued mm -hmm. they weren't talking about us they were just having some intimate awards toilet chat that they didn't want to spread around the place but then this morning i come in and you bucks and you think it's real you still think it's real still, i i consulted a number <laughs> of people during the week and i told his them the expert exact friends facts of the case who are these people you consulted and, uh, lawyers my lord, my lord came back and he <laughs> said uh, 
I think you were right in the first place. I think they were talking Based about Based on you. what? Based on the Based exact your circumstances. Of the story. It's not, I'm not going and saying, of course, I'll never know. <laughs> I'll never know unless one night I go out with We need to speak to Hammond. And we get drunk together and he says, you know what, we, we, we did think you guys were being a bit, uh, pathetic and we were slagging you off a little bit, but we just didn't want to f- front on you in the labs because we, we knew that, uh, you could have beaten us up quite badly and we just didn't want it to go off there in the lavies. You know, in the, in the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. And I, w- and then I'd say, listen, hamster, uh, do you want another sea breeze? It's not a big problem. Let's go for a drive in the Lambo and, uh, play some very loud Jethro Tull and, and hug and make up for it. And, you know, one day maybe that'll happen, but until then, we'll never know. And you, Joe Cornish, will continue to believe that it's my persecution complex <laughs> trying to make you feel bad. I think bad. it's important that we find out the truth, not only for us uh, as a show, you know, our, public image but also for your mental health yeah maybe <laughs> mainly maybe now here's some music for you this is the new single from sparks listeners and um sparks of course are playing a series of concerts in uh, london town later on this summer where they'll be playing the whole of every single album they have ever released like on on uh, different nights so you you would pick your favorite album that's quite common and... isn't it now i don't think i don't think it's common to do every single album <laughs> you've ever common. done uh well, anyway. people do single albums don't they yeah but sparks have you know they've done sort of 20 albums or something 21 albums they're going to play 21 nights wow. and play every single album plus i would imagine a, a sort of package of hits at the end of it but this is their new single and it's called good morning <laughs> that's and excellent now it's time for the news with Rachel matthews nicholas caves and the bad seeds with there she goes my beautiful world do you think if uh nick cave has a birthday party with balloons mm. the balloons are overblown do you think if <laughs> nick cave has wrought iron gates they're overwrought are you trying to say that song's a bit over the top listen he's amazing nick cave i'm a caveman uh yeah. i love cave i love caves and caving but um he's just you know it's big isn't it that's all i'm saying it's giant yeah I mean, it's, it's huge big. It's good. It's celebratory. It's bigger than both of us. He's excited about everything. Absolutely. So, this may have been talked about a lot on other shows during the week. The Millennium Dome? Yeah. The Millennium Dome. When are they going to finish it? What a waste of money. It's a white elephant for John Major and the Tory government. I mean, it's a disgrace. About time we got rid of the Tories. What kind of... And have you been to the exhibition? It's rubbish. And that congestion charge? Yeah. They're not really going to bring it in, are they? Exactly. No, those are old issues. Sorry. Yeah. Connie Huck. What's she done? Uh, what hasn't she done? The Huckster. Connie Huck, uh, was obviously involved in the big tussle over the Olympic torch last weekend, the day after our show. I didn't even know that. Didn't you? No. You idiot. She's been tussling for the torch. Last Sunday, I just lay on the sofa and watched the coverage, as I think many yeah. people did, of the torch ceremony. It was amazing. Mm. It was like, and I'm sure this has been said before, and I do apologise, but it was like some amazing science fiction game show. Yeah. It was like The Running Man. Uh, it w- or, or it was like if you play video games, it was like a, a game of capture the flag, uh-huh. multiplayer online thing, because you you, you saw it presumably on I the heard, telly. I heard about the aftermath. Have I was, you not seen any of the I've images? I've got of it? children. I'm not allowed what to watch doing? television. Got to sit down for the news. I'm only allowed to watch Ben 10. It was a mate. It was. I, I won't describe it because I think everyone else in in the country would have seen it yeah. apart from you. But the key moment was Connie Huck once again somehow getting involved in not only national affairs but international affairs. How is she doing it? First of all, she was involved in the whole Socks the Cat, Dave yeah. Barkler. Uh-huh. The, the Blue Peter Ligate, right? She was the one who had to apologise on screen. She did lots of interviews. She timed it with leaving Blue Peter. Mm-hmm. She got a lot of publicity out of that. Then suddenly, next thing, Connie Huck was chairing the, the, mayor, the, the London Mayor debate. I think that was on London Only Telly. But she was, uh, doing, chairing this important political debate. How did she do there? Was she commanding? Ad- averagely. <laughs> averagely. <laughs> she's a lovely person. Yeah. You love her. I do love her. I met her a few times. And, and she's, yeah. it's, getting a hug from Connie Huck is, as you can imagine, quite something. Yeah. Uh, who's cackling? Nobody. I'm imagining it. <laughs> um, so th- then she was chairing this debate and suddenly Connie Huck's this, this political kind of person, a kind of a paxman for the noughties. And I'm already saying to my girlfriend, Connie, Huck, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, she's perfectly nice, but what's she doing? Like, sorry, Adam's stomach made a weird noise during that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> that was my MacGuffin. <laughs> sorry. It's your chaos <laughs> And then 
basically, to make a long story short, suddenly images of Huck are being beamed around the world. She's starring in a, in a moment of film that's going to be played forevermore, having the Olympic torch grabbed off her. A little slice of history. A little slice of history. But whoever manages Huck, is this being coordinated somehow? Is Huck being secretly positioned to be a, an, a cultural icon? If so, what's she done to deserve it? Mm -hmm. Apart from being very beautiful having ver a very generous uh f amount of stuff stacked on her shelf is that the <laughs> french term <laughs> il y a du monde au balcon yeah i mean she's lovely and i wouldn't say she's the sharpest political mind in, in this is in, turning in a country. little bit sexist <laughs> is it <laughs> no i'm not saying <laughs> talking that, about her shelf and no, saying no, that's, that's <laughs> saying that she's not the I'm, sharpest I'm political saying, mind well Maybe it is sexist, <laughs> but so, I'm not talking about all women. I'm talking about Connie herself. You're saying how's she getting ahead when she's just a no, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Let me stop that right there. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying how has this particular woman <laughs> ended up yeah. at the eye of almost everything that's happened in this country for the, the last six months? Center of history. I think she's brilliant. Yeah. But she shouldn't be chairing political debates. Well, Sarpong, she chairs. She's a spy. She chairs debates. What about June Sarpong? She's similar. She, to be honest, she shouldn't be chairing debates either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, and this isn't a sexist thing. I think yeah. there are a million women better qualified yeah. than either Sarpong or Huck. Davina McCall. I tell you, uh, the other one, who's the Irish one off of Blue Peter? Zoe Salmon. She must be angry. Because Huck's getting all the attention. Right. And you know there's jealousy amongst Blue Peter presenters. Yeah. You know they fight over the chance to abseil down the big slide. I haven't seen or Blue Polish Peter for ages. I've got Nelson. to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you that, that Irish one's angry. That's fascinating. If anyone has an insight into the... Uh... Has anyone watched Blue Peter? Is there an atmosphere of, of resentment amongst the presenters? Huck's not there anymore. But I bet you Salmon's angry. <laughs> I was I was in Europe reading the papers during the week, and Huck was in the International Herald Tribune. Well, you know, stranger things happen. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger is the governor of California. I don't know if you knew that, but yeah, uh, but Schwarzenegger kind of you feel like one feels like Huck has kind of accidentally fallen into these things. Well, that was a pure accident that she was the one carrying the torch when it was grabbed. That's the way history but is yeah, made. She's a trouble magnet. <laughs> she's a troublemaker uh that but that's how history happens you know and is then it? 10 years from now it'll look they'll be playing the clips from blue peter it'll look as if that was her destiny it will won't you it? know when she is uh the first lady famous. either the first lady or the president of the united states really could you think she... she'll be the prime minister of britain uh possibly i think she will possibly i'd vote for her uh, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> okay, I am a little bit. <laughs> Here's some music. This is uh, Radiohead's new single, and it's very, uh, it's lovely. You know this one, right? You've heard this. Probably. Okay. What's it called? It's called Nude. Sure. <coughs> very good. Well done, Radiohead. Uh, that was Nude, and uh, Radiohead, of course, are on tour. A little tour. It's not a massive tour, is it? But they got UK dates. Going to any of these UK dates? Victoria Park on the 24th of June. Might go to that one. Victoria Park again on the 25th. Glasgow Green on the same day. Yeah. Are they really going to play Victoria Park and, and Glasgow Green on the 25th? I don't think that can be right. Anyway, uh, they're around. And I don't think... Uh, I think Glasgow Green is not sold out. And uh, presumably Victoria Park is not sold out, otherwise... We you don't know, though, there. do you? For sure. I'm not absolutely certain. That's part of the service here on the Adam and Joe show at the Big <laughs> British Castle. Is that we're never quite sure. Never quite sure about anything. <laughs> anything yeah. at all. But we're willing to be told, you know? So you're very into that Radiohead album. Uh, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Do you, do you know all the words? No, no. Which albums do you think you could sing every single word to? Could, oh, could you put question. the needle, if we still had needles, Yeah. press play sing through the whole thing from beginning to end without missing a word mm, any pixies album really yeah you say you've got the entire pixies uh oeuvre in your head pretty much uh definitely any bowie album any 70s really? bowie album really yeah 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 no problem okay have you ever uh or did you ever when you were younger put one of those said albums on stand in front of the mirror and pretend you were the lead singer and perform a whole concert <laughs> like joe cornish you mean. like i did <laughs> which one did you do to abc's album the lexicon of love the I, whole... kn I know every single word yeah and i think it's the album i've known every word to i haven't constructed that sentence properly have i i think it's the first album that i knew all the words to right and when i was little 
I stood in front of the mirror, locked my bedroom door, put on your gold lame suit, <laughs> panties, <laughs> made sure my mummy and daddy were busy. <laughs> mummy, just do good, do some homework. Can I borrow your hairbrush to be All with right, my hair? Do. <laughs> and then I'd stand in front of the mirror and I'd perform. I think, right, this is a concert, this is real, there's a crowd out there, mm. I've got to perform this whole album. Yeah. And I would uh, dance, and I know all the words. What kind of dancing would you do? <laughs> Just very Jigging amazing, about. strange dancing. At any point, would you twirl? Quite lanky. Would oh, you twirl of course, around? I'd twirl. Right, I'd be twirling. <laughs> of course, <laughs> you know, because uh, I could imagine you in a boater, like like he is in the yep. in, in the look of love. There was video. probably a change of hats. This was 1982. Mm. I stress with a cane, and I should also stress that the lexicon of love is one of the uh, 100 top British albums of all time, according to the Observer and Q magazine. It Quite comes right. in about 40. Yeah. In my opinion, it should be at number one. It's a smash. It's an absolute peach. Produced by Trevor Horn, amazing string arrangements on it. Yeah, uh, done by a woman called Anne Dudley, who was one of the founder members of the Art of Noise. And yet, Martin Fry, one of the lyrics from that album, I think, is also voted as one of the worst lyrics of all time. Can't complain, mustn't grumble, help yourself to another piece of apple crumble. I think that's from one of the tracks off Beauty Stab, isn't it? Oh, maybe you're right. Oh, no, maybe it isn't. Maybe it is off Flex Kind of Love. Oops, giving the light. I thought I said I knew all the words. But yeah. Sort Ooh, yourself dear. out, Dr. Words. Um, and Anne Dudley, who arranged the strings for this one we're about to hear as well, also won an Oscar for the score for the full Monty. Oh, very <laughs> good, Jay. You've uh, <laughs> certainly been on Wikipedia, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, no. <laughs> I haven't. I actually went into the streets. Did you? And met everyone involved. Uh, do you interview in Anne Dudley's parents? Yes. Anyway, so here we go. Here's the first track off of ABC's The Lexicon of Love. Uh, I love this lexicon. And here, here it is. And dig these strings. Kabam! That's ABC from The Lexicon of Love with uh, Show Me. Very good indeed, isn't Thanks. it? Thanks. Well done. And we were just talking there about how important Anne Dudley is. If you don't know who she is, stick her name into a search engine because she weaves through the history of British popular culture, TV, movies, uh, and music in an extraordinary way. And she's one of these people whose name isn't famous, which makes her even cooler in my book. You know, she just does what she does without flashing her, you know, face about the place. Yeah, you weren't going to say that, though, were you? <laughs> yeah, I was. Her name's well known within uh, music circles. Y you know what I'm saying. Yeah, though. the course. average person in the street would not know who Anne Dudley is. Sure. However, their life would have been affected by her work in a positive way. I'll bet you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, ABC with Show Me. It's trail time. What kind of trail have we got here, Jude? It's for Stephen Merchant. Excellent. Let's hear what Merch has been up to. That's the members with Sound of the Suburbs. That was a session, live session, recorded for the John Peel Show on Radio 1 on the 17th of January, 1979. That was a great day. And then, of course, uh, John Peel did a show called Sound of the Suburbs. Do you remember that? Was that on Channel 4? I think it was. Maybe it was. And it was great. He was going around doing little uh, doc mini docs on kind of uh, musical subcultures. Documentaries. Documentaries, yeah. He's and, one of my uh, favourite doctors. <laughs> it was a good show. It was excellent. Do you remember that? We used to work. That was commissioned by a friend of ours. Do you remember that, Joe? Yeah. And um, there was an amazing one on Aphex Twin. One of the very few times that I think I've ever seen Aphex Twin being interviewed on uh, TV. Richard James, of course. He's not the best interviewee, uh, but uh, it was pretty amazing seeing him and Peel coming together and exploding on the television. There you go, that's uh, my peel sound of the suburb facts <laughs> for you this morning. <laughs> I've, I've spent the week in uh, Europe, Europe's capital of jazz. Uh, the jazz capital? The jazz capital of Europe. Uh, where's that? Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Jazz cigarettes, jazz yeah. magazines, jazz clubs. <laughs> if you love jazz, it's the place to go. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit old for jazz these days, mm -hmm. so I merely wandered past some of the clubs and heard some, you know, freestyle clarinetting wafting out the door. Uh, and went on to, to, to better things. Yeah. But, um, I watched a bit of Dutch telly while I was there. Some jazz telly. Some j jazz, I did watch some jazz telly as well, but I, um, watched some proper telly. Right. And they've got an amazing game show out there. What have they got? It's called Bloken. Bloken? Bloken. B-L-O-K-E-N, I think, or maybe E-R. Uh-huh. Not sure. And it's televised Tetris. <laughs> oh my lord. Seriously, it's two people behind, uh, you know, quiz show console things. Yeah. And a man behind a podium. And they've got Tetris. <laughs> and they answer quiz questions. Yeah. And every time they get a quiz question right, they, they buy three blocks. Oh. And then they play Tetris. Right. They guide the blocks down. 
and uh position them and it's on a big video screen yeah and it looks exactly like tetris yeah it's not like they're taking real three-dimensional blocks and stacking no, them in no that no. would that would be good and they're Japanese no it's just on that. the screen yeah and when they get a full line the audience applauds good they should block that's what i used to have a little audience whenever i used to play when was tetris, tetris invented uh invented i don't know Wait, where how long's it been around late uh, easily 70s, since the 70s yeah how long's it been around since the advent of the game boy which is what early 90s yeah it was a, there was a documentary years. all about it a russian so what's going right. on with dutch television have they just discovered tetris or has blurken been running for 18 years it's a classic game i mean if you come up with a format like that you know and you if you decide that you're just going to put a classic thing on mm. tv mm. that's all you need it doesn't you know uh, some things are timeless rubik's cube timeless you could make a tv There's no, show out could of you yeah people yes. solving rubik's cubes could yeah. you easily there's lots of footage on youtube of people solving them with their feet and stuff you could easily do it. And Michael, Mi Michel Gondry, he solves it with his feet, doesn't he? he? Famously, yeah. What a ponce. Um, you could get <laughs> Noel Edmonds to host it. And, yes. Uh, Edmonds could ring out some drama from that. Easily. It's true. Easy. It makes you think, why haven't all the key board games and video games been turned into TV game shows? That's true. Like <laughs> Cluedo. <laughs> they tried Cluedo, didn't they, actually? Well. Connect Four? <laughs> That connect would four good. would be good speed connect four we talked about this yeah. before but yeah. speed connect four would be a good tv Snakes show next ladders yeah I can't go wrong with that no but celebrity connect four i would be yeah. very good because it's it's more complex than um noughts and crosses but it's essentially the same sort of thing and it, it sorts the stupid people from the bloken bloken him flugel dash what does bloken mean i wonder Blo it means blocks blocked blocks. block blocks blocks bloken it's Blo not how they said it really in Amsterdoodle, blocking. <laughs> That's the end of that, anyway. That's excellent. Um, now it's time for some baby shambles. Oh, he's back in prison. He's isn't back he? in prison. That's where he gets his inspiration. He's like the musical Oscar Wilde. Yeah. He's in Reading Jail, <laughs> writing another amazing poem. Spelt G A O L. Gaul. Ga Gaul. You yeah. know, some people like to spell jail that way. Yeah. And in I the olden times. No, but they still do. That's do what I'm saying. Every now and again, you'll read the paper or whatever, and someone spelt it G-A-O-L, and you think, you are a flaming tool bag. Do you think he's king of the castle in the, in the prison? Uh, yes, definitely. Do you think all the other crims respect him? Oh. I don't think so. I think they think he's a loose charlatan. Do you? And they punch him he's up. Not... They punch him up in the face. He's not in the charlatans. They do. <laughs> they think he's in the charlatans. <laughs> they think he's in the charlatans. Yeah, they, they, they duff him up. If you're a lag, get on the blower. <laughs> Let us know what you think of the doc. Is that what they call lag? Yeah. Cons, I thought they were called. Yeah, there's a couple of different words for them. Who are the screws? <laughs> They're the guards. Will you explain more while we listen to You Talk by no. Baby Shambles? No, I won't. That's good, though, isn't it? Come on. You Talk by Baby Shambles. Uh, that's the one that was co-written by the lady. Come on. Come on. Wasn't it? it was it? The lady woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The model. <laughs> model bird. <laughs> You're so sexist. I am a little It's bit. really emerging this morning that Adam <laughs> is sexist. It's amazing how Persecution clearly it's emerging. complex. Well, look, we got, we got another email from uh, Top Gear Man. Kate did, Moss. Yeah. Thank you, Jude. Kate Moss. Um, Shall I tell you what he said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did he yeah, say? He says... This is, this is Pat. Yeah, this is Patrick Doyle. He says to Adam and Joe, What the hell is wrong with you guys? Why must you insist on stirring up the hornet's nest? Are you insane? The feud was over. Andy, and it's Wilman, not Hillman, by the way, offered Sorry. you an olive branch. Now, that branch lies broken in the dust. And why? All because of Adam's paranoia and his so-called friend's delusional analysis of the situation. You can't <laughs> win this thing. Walk away now, Adam and Joe, what little of your honour remains. Yours faithfully, Pat's Top Gear producer. <laughs> 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 He's tweaking my totties. He wants, uh, he wants a confrontation. He's flicking your Nigels. He's flicking my flagellum. Uh, he definitely wants it to go off, Pat. He, nobody wants it to go off more than us. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like nothing more to be than to be punched up by the most important and powerful show in the world. Not by uh, the hamster, though. Hamster's not punching anyone up. Hamster's not allowed. And somebody else uh, emailed us to to point out that uh, the hamster isn't allowed to drink alcohol for two years after his crash. Right. So uh, he couldn't have been drunk. That's for medical reasons, not because it. Yeah. It was... Yeah, and you can't take him out and, and have a drink with him to smooth it over. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. Well, he could have a non-alcoholic sea breeze. Is that the same though? It's delicious. Yeah. It's not going to loosen his bobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Uh, now listen, hey, I think we should launch the nation's favourite feature. The nation demand it. 
Here's the jingle. Text the nation. Text, 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 text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Now, this week on Text the Nation, uh, friends, we are chatting about, I'm going to call them challenge docs. Mm. Yeah? I like it. Documentaries that involve some kind of challenge that has been set, or is usually set by the author of the documentary. Uh, who's the foremost protagonist of the genre? Well, I would say the that proponent. Morgan Spurlock is the most famous one. Would you say he's more famous than Gorman? Uh, internationally, I would, yes. Right. Max. Maybe not, though. Maybe I'm doing Dave Gorman down. He's got a massive international following, Gorman. But the premise is, people who set themselves challenges, mm. they, they create the challenge themselves and make up some kind of weird challenge that's supposed to illuminate the truth about some kind of a situation. Uh -huh. So Morgan Spurlock did uh, Super Size Me, yeah. where he ate nothing but McDonald's for yeah. how, however long it One was. One month, I think it was. For a month. Dave Gorman possibly created this genre with his um, I'm Dave Gorman thing. Was that the first thing he did, where he met other people called Dave Gorman? He was with Danny Wallace at that point, I think, yeah. wasn't he? They were flatmates. And uh, there was Tony Hawks as well. He wrote a book where he dragged a fridge around Ireland. Yes. Um, but he, I, I'm not aware of Tony Hawks's, um, you know, I don't think he's done too many filmed documentaries. There's, what's his name? Bear, Bear Gr Grill? Grease. Bear Grills. Grills. What? Grills. My grills. Spelt G-R-Y-L-E-S, I think. I'm just gonna call him Bear. Bear. Yes. He invents challenges for himself. The other day he invented the challenge of flying over the top of Everest mm. in some kind of, uh, propeller machine you've made joe jude sick she's been sick on the she's floor been sick all over the That's floor a shame. yeah he, he's a kind of propeller flying machine yeah and he's uh going over everest right yeah uh, in fact, that's on tonight, I believe, on more four. On more four, it's repeated. It's ridiculous because he set himself the challenge, mm -hmm. and then he goes about complaining, and his wife's getting all upset. Oh God, I hope Bear's going to make it <laughs> over the top of Everest. <laughs> well, Bear decided to go over the top of Everest. Yeah, it just seems like a waste of of uh, the marriage money. Is breaking up. I, th 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 I don't know how he sounds. I've never seen him. Is he uh, British? I or? Don't, don't know how he sounds. I only I, tuned into the last I ten minutes. I decided he sounds like this. I think he does. He's gonna say, "I'm sorry." Sorry, da darling. I've got to go over Everest. There's nothing I can do about it. I set myself the challenge, and now I have to go, <laughs> and I can't get out of it now. What was Dave Gorman's latest challenge? To drive across America whilst only buying fuel from independent... Yeah. Uh, which is quite a refined one. From mum and pop operations. Not sure how successful it was. I didn't see it. It was a strange one, but and he almost immediately ran into trouble. Because right. it's very hard to go across America and not fill up from a corporate station, you know? From the reviews I read, you've got a similar kind of moment where he stuck himself in some awful corner and he was really punishing himself... But he made the stupid challenge up in well, the first exactly. place. I mean, he, a, a few, a few, uh, mishaps before him. He gets some problems. His camera, um, person gets a bad back and she has to fly yeah. back home. So he's on his own with his camcorder and he fills up at a, he has to fill up at a petrol station. He's feeling all sorry Do you for himself. think she got a bad back or is that a euphemism for, this is rubbish. <laughs> I'm off home. <laughs> no, she, no, she got, got a bad, bad back. She, no, we've had that confirmed. <laughs> now, definitely, she did have a bad back. She got a bad back. Gorman is the last the person who good. would lie about something like that, I'm yep. telling you. He might set himself fatuous challenges, but within the parameters of the challenge, he keeps it absolutely real. And he abs and he kills himself, you know, with, uh, he, with hate. If, if the challenge goes wrong, you know, he's really down on himself. Yeah. So he but filled this up is the weird thing. Yeah, he filled up at a petrol station, though, and he was so depressed about it that he went on a little mini kind of super size me splurge and he's a vegetarian <gasps> but he just for, for no for no apparent reason he just went off and ate every fast food joint he could find and then was violently sick the next day you know or that night in fact Great uh, tv and you just thought why are you doing this to yourself gorman you lunar so what's the text question for people to text in about well i'm just curious where uh to go next with these mm. kind of things and more challenges for people like spurlock and gorman i was thinking um something about Orange, the c orange, the colour orange, right? So the premise is, what challenge would you set yourself yeah. if you were to make one of these documentaries? Yes, what or I would do. can you suggest a new one? For I would, a... I would eat only oranges. Mm. No, a only orange food, right? Any food that's orange. Mm. That's all I'm going to eat mm. for a year, and I'm going to do it in orange in France, <laughs> and I'm going to dress entirely in orange. <laughs> 
and I'm only going to listen to music that is orange related. Everything in my life is going to be somehow. Why? Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is that your answer? Yes. Why do they? Why do any of them do it? Because they're trying to prove a well, thing. Well, I'm trying to prove something. Morgan Spurlock's trying to make a point about di people's diets. You, what do you think I'm trying to do? Dave Gorman's trying to make a point about the oil Corporate industry. Corporate America. What, what, what about me? Well, what about you? Orange things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make a point about orange things. Is that so hard to understand? Uh, here's, yes. an, here's another one. Okay, presented with a choice of going left or right... Nice, I like this For already. For a whole year, I'm always going to go right. Because Danny Wallace had one called The Yes Man, and yeah. he sold that for a million pounds to Jim Carrey. Exactly, there you go. I'm going to sell this for a lot more than that, because it's got all kinds of political overtones mm. as well, mm. even though it's mm. just Which way are you going, though? Going left. I'm going right. Because of, course you're, of course you're going right. Yeah. I could have guessed that. Because <laughs> I'm such a fascist. But, um, <laughs> no, uh, but mainly because I want the show to be called uh, Adam Buxton Fights for His Rights. Nice. You know? So you just turn right the whole time? All the time. And are there any other connotations? No. To <laughs> so it's merely directional? Yes. Right. Yes. You realise you'd go round in a circle? <laughs> Would I? Yes. <laughs> around and round and round. Yeah, but the world. Like somebody paddling with one oar on one side of a oh, boat. You know. Anyway, there's a couple of ideas I'm going to have you. to think of some now. So, listeners, uh, we want more more uh, notions, more ideas for challenge docs. Text in your idea to 64046. That's the text number, 64046, please. How about this one, just before we play some music? Oh, God. Spend ten weeks without saying the word cool. <laughs> Impossible. That would be hard, wouldn't it? I'd like to see someone do that. Now, here's Les Artistes with santo gold uh there you go that was santo gold with les artistes not the other way around only an absolute idiot would think it was the other way around so i've never even heard of santo gold why doesn't anyone tell me these things you know jeff in, in wimborne is very angry with you about that i'm sure he is i'm sure because it makes me look stupid it makes the big british castle look stupid it makes everybody look stupid and it's disrespectful to santo gold you know everyone loses in a situation like that but here's the thing we don't get sent those kind of CDs, right? We get sent all the weird stuff, and we get sent some wonderful stuff on the margins. But we don't get all the mainstream... You know, we haven't got the cop well, copy of the MGMT album. No one gave us that, because they think, well, Adam and Joe, you know... You know, that's We're what supposed to go out and buy them. I know, but what's... There's got to be a perk of being a DJ at the Big British Castle, right? Right. Isn't there? Yes. Because it's not the money, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, uh, listen, just to remind you, listeners, Text the Nation is currently open and ongoing. The text number 64046. We're looking for your ideas for Dave Gorman stroke Morgan Spurlock uh, style documentary challenges. What framework would you set yourself if you had to do one of these kind of um, challenge documentaries? Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor are the other ones, of course. Right. With Th the there's for, uh, for charity, I think, raising money for charity. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's an offshoot. That's not the main motivation, though, is it? It's not like, hey, let's go and raise the money for charity. How can we do it? Uh, you know, I'm sure they were delighted by the mm. fact that it was going mm. to charity, but their main objective was to motorbike across Wimbledon. Here's my one, right? What? I'm going to go around the world nude. Are you? Naked. Well done. And I'm going to challenge attitudes to my bits. <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll be great on a number of levels. Won't it? Society's attitudes to your bits. That's a very interesting and multi-layered topic. It's, it'll be challenging for the cameraman who can do that Austin Powers stroke Beowulf style hiding the Jennies yes. with objects. Yes. Thing. That's good, Always man. Always popular. You know, in a few years' time, wasn't there a documentary not so long ago about people riding around on bikes with their bits all it's hanging out and done. stuff? It's probably been done. You know, if it's in the right context, people are fine with bits. This is what I've discovered on YouTube. Mm. YouTube removed one of my videos this week, right? Because I think someone had complained that there was bits in it. And it was a clip from this show, Shock Video, that Joe and I uh, voice over that's occasionally on Bravo. And I had meticulously censored the clip with uh little cutouts of mary whitehouse's face so that you couldn't see any offending bits right because i knew what youtube's policy on bits was that wasn't you know and still they removed the clip because obviously someone complained about it or whatever despite the fact that it was a raucously hilarious clip and uh 
I just thought, what is going on here? If you search YouTube, there's all sorts of, uh, I mean, there's loads of horrific um, stuff on there anyway, violence-wise and uh, bad language-wise and all kinds of subversive material on there. Um, you know, what's the problem with a little bit of uh, lovely nudity? Mm -hmm. And, of course, there is nudity on there as well, but it's under the guise of um, health and things <coughs> like that. I'm going to bring it, bring it back round to the text the nation thing. Yeah, I know, but that's uh, no, that's true. That had to be said. Nudism. I think nudism's been done already. I was thinking of maybe uh, just being drunk the whole time. Has that been done? Being drunk all the time. Well, Dom Jolly did his thing mm. um, where he's going around. What about what about not having a watch? Not having a not being aware of the time. Not being aware of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's <laughs> clocks everywhere. Though. No, there aren't. Aren't they not? Yeah, the the uh, idea of the civil clock, the municipal clock, is dead. Right. In Britain. Very, I'd be more very few in... municipal clocks around. Councils have ripped them down. Some councils stamp on them. Like public toilets. Yeah. You know, that's what I would do if I was running for mayor. They assume everyone has a mobile, so I'd no, no municipal clocks. Toilet. Often they're wrong. Whew. Municipal clocks. I hate municipal clocks. Anyway, if you can come up with a better idea, text surely 64046 <laughs> with your idea for your challenge documentary. Now, here's a track that turns up. Uh, this was a B-side, I think, by Beck, um, and it turns up on the reissue of Odelay as one of the uh, tracks on the extras disc, and it's a lovely kind of Latin reworking of, what was the original track called? Jackass, I think, maybe. And this is called Burro by Beck. That's Burro by Beck, and uh, as I said, you know, you can find that on the Odelay reissue. You uh, Do you like reissues, Joe? Do you go out, and go out and buy an album that you were fond of ten years back? Like, would you get the Air reissue of Moon Safari? No. Ooh. No. Very I confident. don't. That's not an album I own. Do you not? No, because it was perfectly easy to listen to that album <laughs> and feel as if you owned it. At even if you did Yeah. It's a very good album, though. Mm. It's got lots of good stuff on there. Mm. Uh, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, uh, Saturday morning, and we're halfway through our show. Yeah, I'm There's... very quickly going to. Oh, do, yes. do you mind? No, I'm very quickly going to give you some, some challenge ideas just mm. to set this ball rolling. Mm. Here's one that's come in from Deep Rest, who I believe is a supercomputer, mm -hmm. uh, who's currently asleep. Um, but he or she says, "When I was ten, I challenged myself to walk home from school without standing on a shadow." I had to run and jump over car shadows. Parked ones were easy to jump, moving cars were a bigger problem, gaming skills were brought into play. Unfortunately, when I got in front of my house, it was cast in shadow and I had to go to my <laughs> friend's house until the sun went behind the clouds. Would that make good TV? I think that's good. Don't step on any shadows. Yeah. That's... Stay in the sun. Uh, what about, uh, Hank Marvin? Would you be able to step on him? Nice. Shadows, you see. Shadows. Uh, it's time for the news now. Read by Rachel Matthews. Brother, you better watch out for the skin What's a skin deep? Have you ever wondered that? He's saying skin deep, isn't he? No, it's a skin deep. Better watch out for the skin deep. Better watch out for the skin deep. Skin deep. Skindy by the Stranglers. It's like a gnome. It's, uh, Jude, our producer, was saying maybe it's the Brazilian gnome man. Argentinian. Argentinian. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Skindy there. One or two people have texted us to follow up the Argentinian gnome. Have they? We were talking about the famous YouTube video last week, and one of the most interesting suggestions is that it is a viral promotional video for a Halo game. Oh. Adam, you don't really play video games, but there's a creature in the video game Halo called a grunt. Mm -hmm. One of the littlest, like the pawns in, in a chess game, one yeah. of the littlest guys that are quite easy to kill. Yeah. Looks and moves very similarly to that gnome in that video. Yeah. And there's a director called Neil Blau Clamped or something who's done some promotional stuff for Halo, and it could be one of his. Told you it was a viral, didn't I? You did, but you might not Told be you. right. No, I am. I, I am. might not be right. I am right. You are right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just yeah. found out. Did you? Yeah. I'm really? Right. I'm right. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> I'm right about that. Makes a change? <laughs> <laughs> Why were you looking at me like that when you were talking about the grunt? <laughs> <laughs> Why, do you think I was insinuating that you're, you're a grunt? Yeah. Was well, the <laughs> stuff you said about the short man, he's easy to kill. <laughs> because, because i think you look like a grunt i knew it and i'm gonna kill you i'm right i was right about that as well yeah, you're right uh are we gonna do text the nation now or are we gonna leave it uh till after the next song have you got a few there 
Yeah, I've got quite a lot. Oh, okay. Well, let's have a few now. Uh, just to remind you, listeners, should we have the jingle again? Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yeah, just to remind you folks that uh, the nation's favourite feature this week concerns uh, challenge documentaries. Yeah, where you make up a kind of uh, stupid challenge for yourself that's supposed to illuminate some aspect of life and, and then make a documentary about it like Morgan Spurlock did or Dave Gorman does. They're the kings of the genre. Yeah, so you're going to take your role as a commissioning editor again, Adam, and I'm okay. going to pitch you some of these shows. All right, good. And d will you commission them? Um, okay, here's one from Oliver and Hackney. Yeah. He says uh, he's looking for a TV company to fund his challenge to live for a year while spending at least a thousand pounds a day <laughs> as a damning indictment of money and stuff. That's good. Uh, yes, I'm going to commission that, and uh, but I want to be in it. That's you, that's going to cost three hundred and sixty-five. No, ten thousand. He says. So that's going to be very expensive. He says spend at least ten thousand a day. For for how long is he doing it? A year. A year. What's that? Ten thousand a day. That's three hundred and fifty. No. Three million. Three, nearly three million for a year. Uh, commissioning that one? Quickly? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, I'm commissioning Yes. It. Wow. That's most of your annual budget gone down the drain, and you might not be able to fund this one from Daniel, who says, for one month I would answer any question with the opposite opinion or view or answer to my actual true answer or I point of view. I was thinking about that very idea. But it's hard to regulate, though. It's hard to establish whether it really is your... You just have to be honest. I have to be honest? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> difficult commodity it's not very televisual though is it yeah. no 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 so is that is that a goer uh, no no not being commissioned daniel no. that's rough sorry justice. daniel good idea though. uh here's george from sheffield he says my challenge would be to find the longest stretch of downhill i could find then travel down it in a pair of those kids shoes with wheels in the heel <laughs> balancing precariously all the way possibly all the way down ben nevis to the river thames which is, of course, at the foot of Ben Nevis, and then down into the North <laughs> Sea. I'd call it the Wheelie Big Adventure. Wheelie, the Wheelie Big Adventure. That's good. I like it. I'm going to get Lenny Henry to do that one. Really? What if George wants to do it? No. George? He hasn't got the chops. He's not Can a George lovable... exec produce? Exec prod? Yeah. Yeah, all right, George. You okay. Got it. We, got it. we got that one. But straight. I want Lenny for that one. Okay. Daryl in London. Go a whole year eating only food that's free. E.g. free samples at supermarkets, other people's free food when they, when they do buy one, get one's freeze. Like well, what we did. Yeah, we did a similar challenge and uh, it was He's terrifying. He's going to try and live for a year, though. You were, your nerves wouldn't be able to stand it, honestly. There was a Japanese game show where somebody did that, didn't they? They locked him in a room and he could only eat off things that he won from competitions in magazines? Oh, yeah. yeah. He died. He died. He didn't. I'm making that up. <laughs> but probably. Is that one go? Is that a goer? Uh, that's a good idea. I like that one, yes. It's being commissioned. Yeah. Wow. Uh, here's one from John in Newcastle. My challenge would be to cross the UK whilst avoiding any kind of path or road. <laughs> that's good, I think. Why? Because it's about the diminishment of grass. The diminishment. Come on, it's a big issue. Already when it rains, everyone's tarmac their front gardens. Yeah. That's one of the causes of flooding, right? Uh, it's important to have absorbent land. Absorbent land? Yeah, otherwise it all floods. You're right. You've talked me around. Yeah. I'm commissioning it. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. We've got, uh, we've got four out of five commissioned. This I feel is... bad for the one guy I didn't commission now. Really? Yeah, that's Daniel. He's, he's apparently angry and on his way his to the studio. probably the best one as well. Um, here's someone who's anonymous. I'd spend a year in bed watching TV being brought food to see how hard it is for ill people. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, just, uh, students basically here's a it? quote That's... here's a quote a possible line of dialogue that will be said during mm. this documentary well i've been in bed for a week now and i'm already i'm feeling like i'd like to not be in bed <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing isn't it this is the surprising thing that you find out at the beginning yeah. of the documentary you think it would be fun to be in bed and be being in bed all the time is not so fun yeah. after all it turns out it's not it's stinky it's and not sweaty it's and there's to be. food in my crack exactly yes or no uh i'm i i'm that i am commissioning that <laughs> yes i'm putting wow. that on bbc3 this is amazing oh yeah, that's oh, yeah okay <laughs> here's another one from jim in bristol uh what no i'm skipping sorry jem to raise your hopes i'm skipping your one is that filthy no she's got a good one spend a year 
only communicating through the medium of mime yeah. to highlight the tragic demise of mime as a genre of entertainment. <laughs> well, what about people who are mute and have to uh, that's, that's use as well. sign language? I'm, I'm doing Jem's job for her, but I think that as well. Anything to get it commissioned. <laughs> Anything you say. No, listen, I'm not commissioning that. I'm sorry. Jem! <laughs> no, that's terrible. I'm not. She's screaming in Should Bristol. we have some more of yeah, these? We'll off, come back but... to these later. Keep them coming in. The text number is 64046, or you can communicate via email if you're scared of texts hmm. adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk it's gnarls barkley time this is run that's snarls barkley with run this is adam and joe we're here on bbc six music on a saturday morning where we are every saturday morning from nine till twelve and it's a pleasure to be here may i say joe thank you you know what the thing is about bbc six music what is the thing about the it? thing about it is here's the thing it's only available on digital Oh, yeah. So you've got to be t technically slightly sophisticated to get it. I got uh, recognised this week by a kind of a vagrant man. Can I finish, man? Well, I was going to say right. that the uh, the vagrant man was uh, unable to um, listen because he didn't have a digital radio. Really? Yeah. Uh, so what do we do about him? My point is, it's only available on digital or via the internet on yeah. Listen Again or via the podcast available on. Um, iTunes, what are you saying, Jude? Or on TV, Sky Channel, whatever it is, or Freeview Channel. But my point is that you've got to make a bit of effort. Right. So everyone listening is a little bit extra cool. That's true, yeah. They've it sorts the, the, the wheat from the chaff. They've gone the distance. And maybe, you know, maybe they've discovered the wonders of six music in general. And what a wonderful box that is to open up. It's a box full of fun. Exactly. It's like a big box of cakes. Here's a free play uh, from me. This is uh, another of my favourite 80s artists, a bit later in the 80s now, Thomas Dolby, from an album called The Flat Earth. Now, just to get you into Thomas Dolby... I probably know all the words to this one. Yeah. To this so album. I. I mean, this is a really good <clears> album. <throat> very, very good album. Uh, Thomas Dolby's father was a professor of classical Greek art and archaeology at the University of London and Oxford University. Ooh. All right, imagine the, his genetic inheritance from a brainiac dad like that. So mm. already... He's We're a dealing with a boffin, yeah. yeah. He was given the nickname Dolby by his school chums because he was inseparable from his cassette player. There you go. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Dolby then tried to sue him, and he legally agreed with them that he would only ever use the word Dolby connected to Thomas. Uh-huh. He'd never use it outside that, uh, that context. It's nice of Dolby Laboratories to be bendy on that issue. It is, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, if, you, if you're into rock... And you think Dolby might not be for you. Remember, he played the keyboard on Def Leppard's 1983 album Pyromania <laughs> under the pseudonym Booker T. Boffin. No, did he really? Yeah. <laughs> Dolby facts. I don't know. If, <laughs> that's not going to change anyone's minds on Dolby, though, is it? Rock fans love Def Leppard. <laughs> they're a big, they're very important. Everyone loves them. Well, they are. They're massive. Plus, he invented, this might make you dislike him, he invented a lot of the software that allowed polyphonic ringtones to exist. And he wrote hundreds of basic phone ringtones that come installed in your phone, including the famous polyphonic Nokia theme. Diddly -de -diddly -de -diddly -de -diddly -de. Is that the Nokia I theme? I'm the sure one, a listener will tell us. He wrote that? No. Surely not. That's amazing. That's more impressive than uh, Eno having written that startup chime. Yeah, the, the, the Apple or the Microsoft oh, one. I think it might be Microsoft. Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, anyway, here's a track from the Flat Earth Thomas Dolby's album. This is called I Scare Myself. Mellow. Mellow Jazz on a Saturday with Thomas Dolby. Is that you playing guitar on there? Yeah. That's good, man. Well done. I'm going to play this piano riff here. Mm, that? that wasn't so good. Oh, come on. That no, was that brilliant. Was a shame. That ruined it. You ruined it. That was Thomas Dubley until it got ruined by Adam Buxty at the end with I Scare Myself from his marvellous album... Uh, the Flat Earth. Yeah, it's an absolute peach on there. What was the hit on there? Oh, it was, um, uh, it was one that was not hyperactive, which was not really representative of the rest of the album, was that it? That is correct. Hyperactive. That's a good song, though. Yes. That's a good one. Uh, now, what were you, were you going to say something there, Joe? Nope. Oh. Mm. Well, you, well, you, sort of the way you were breathing led me to believe that you were going to speak. <laughs> what kind of breathing is that? <laughs> Ugh, that's a skindy. 
That's the way Skindy breathes. Really? Yeah. Oh. That's why the Stranglers wrote a song about it. Uh, now, I'm not going to play... Shall I, shall I play my song sometime in the next half hour? Yeah, I think so. What is your song? What is, what's the story behind well, the song? Well, the story behind the song, right? This is one that I had... Uh, it's actually an offshoot of one of our previous projects. You this is like that few... MTV show Storytellers. Yeah. Where the star tells you the story behind the song. Right. Sting on a stool with you, some you... Sting fans <laughs> yeah. all around him. Well, it's very stool-based, certainly. Mm. But you must have had a few Song Wars songs that you started. You've gone in a different direction. Yes. And Rejects. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, this isn't a reject as such. It's, uh, I can't remember which it was started for. Maybe even the Kate Nash one not so long ago. And then I sort of went in a different direction with it. And I ended up, like I set myself a, this is a challenge that I've set myself. Mm. I'm not making a documentary about it though. Is to occasionally write songs about other musicians that I know nothing about. Because it's a fun thing, you know what I mean? You sort of just use guesswork. And right. You, you know a little bit about them. You're vaguely aware of their oeuvre. Uh, so I'm writing tribute songs about people that I'm, I don't really know that much Good about. Good idea. And I, I've written one about Jackson Brown. Do you know Jackson Brown? Not very much about him. I don't know much about him either. So I've written a song. All I know about Jackson Brown is that a lot of ladies like him. Right. right? G- at least two or three girls that I went out with in my life. They were big Jackson Brown fans. And I've tried to listen to Jackson Brown on occasion. I've got Lake for the Sky, which is a big Jackson Brown album. It's quite boring. Uh, so armed only with my knowledge, my scant knowledge of uh, Lake for the Sky, I've written a Jackson Brown tribute song, which I will be playing you listeners sometime in the next half hour here on BBC Six Music. But we're coming up to 11 o'clock now. And I think it's time that we played some Hot Chip, don't you? Is this the new single? Yeah. One Pure Thought by Hot Chip. Kirsty McCall with Innocence. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Joe's chuckling away at their texts and emails. Yeah, they're funny. There. Some of the things that people are suggesting are funny, but more than that, it's the way people write them that make me laugh. <laughs> uh, but keep them coming in. 64046 and we'll do some more ideas for high concept personal challenge programs in a while. But first, I think we're going to hear Adam's exciting new song. And... <clears throat> <laughs> adam man i've just got to say thanks for doing this yeah because i was lazy this week and went off on holiday and uh you filled the gap that you, my laziness has left you went off to watch blocken <laughs> <laughs> a blocken holiday apparently blocken the uh it's from sh- belgium but it's shown on dutch television it's been around for 10 years it's been running for 10 years amazing someone in the uk should do that no they shouldn't we could host that come on it's the most boring program i've ever seen i thought you were saying it was fun it was fun it's compelling compelling (laughs) boring uh anyway so because of joe's block and mini break um there was no uh song wars this week Mm. we're gonna do it next week though right yes we are definitely Definitely. um but what i did was i went back into my vaults listeners because i couldn't bear the idea of you guys being without a a original crappy song (laughs) to listen to and i sort of thought as i was um emailing it to our producer jude last night why am i doing this because the whole point of the thing is the face-off element right i mean it seems a bit insane if you just do one song one insane song yeah i did it before yeah that's my no more song wars song yeah but there was a reason for it there's no real reason it was ruddy good it was amazing (laughs) um anyway so yeah this is about jackson brown and main mainly because i just had the name the name i saw the name in a, a mag or whatever and and i just got it in my head and i was thinking jackson brown jack it was just a fun name to say and i thought this is a good chorus for a song okay adam's mad yeah. and he's written this mad song all right and here it is <laughs> My songs are a way to communicate the pain Of love going wrong again and again I use my voice to sing all the words If I did it, they would slip away like on a love church I'm Jackson Brown, I'm Jackson Brown I'm taking all my feelings and I'm writing them down I lost love there, a heartbreak here If I did It's late for the sky It features many songs That will make you wanna cry It's a West Coast sound It's warm but bittersweet If you like that kind of thing Then you're in for a treat Well it's ideal for an evening With a lady or some friends You can play it in the background When the 
dinner section ends The mood is consistent so your guests should be fine And it slips down nicely with a lovely glass of wine I'm Jackson Brown, I'm Jackson Brown I'm taking all my feelings and I'm writing them down I lost love there, a heartbreak here If I didn't write them down, they would simply disappear Jackson Brown's in the house Jackson Brown's in the house Jackson Brown is making some tea Would anybody like some tea? I'm Jackson Brown I'm Jackson Brown I'm taking all my feelings And I'm writing them down I lost love there A heartbreak here If I didn't write them down They would simply disappear I'm Jackson Brown I'm Jackson Brown Mm. It's finished. It's finished. I had trouble concentrating on that because well, I was reading the hilarious text. Oh, well, that's great, isn't it? I can't do my job. Yeah, That yeah. was good, though. Thanks. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Fill me in on I, what just happened. I feel, I feel very much uh, the same way as I do when I have that dream <laughs> that I've woken up in school uh, naked in a bed. You know what I mean? You, you have that kind of dream when you, <laughs> when you wake up. And you feel humiliated. Anyway, um, <laughs> it was great. It was really good. I'm just go. being honest. I was reading the text and I forgot to focus on it. That's great. I got to read the texts. <laughs> I can tell to leave by the producer. So that's a solo. You don't have to vote for that because uh, there's only one of those. But but if if it was a category for song wars, the category would be songs about artists you know very little about. Right. Okay, and uh, unfortunately, there's only one entrance. What, um, what, uh, now you know, and don't let this make you angry. <laughs> Here we go. But what equipment are you using? Because I mentioned the other week I went round to Adam's house mm. and, uh, I was startled by the amount of equipment that he's bought in. I bought one keyboard. He's bought the most amazing keyboard. <laughs> you have more than one keyboard. Well, I've got my basic keyboard that you use. It's a very you... simple question. Yeah. What equipment did you use on that, on that Garage track? Band. Really? Is that entirely Garage Band? No, but I play keyboard on it. Right. Have you ever plugged in a keyboard to Garage Band? No. Oh, it's a whole new world. I man. do musical typing on the, on the QWERTY You can keyboard. do the same thing, yeah, exactly. It's just a, an actual physical keyboard right. rather than the one on screen. Right. Drum machine? Uh, no, no. That's you have all. a drum machine. Uh, I've got an old one, yeah. Do you yeah. or do you not have a drum machine? I didn't use one on that one. No. Didn't you? No. I haven't got anything. It's all garage band, mate. Come on. Is it all garage band? It's all band? in there. You it just is. need to explore. Yeah. Really? It's amazing. Of course, there are other music making programs available on the market, ladies right. and gentlemen. I, but the, but the, listen, the point I'm trying to make is yeah. you've got lots of equipment that I don't have. Therefore, if your songs sound better than mine, it's not because you're better. It's because of the money you've spent on the equipment. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is it? Yeah. Should is we... that coming across? <laughs> <laughs> at all <laughs> you, <laughs> am i hinting what's the opposite of magnanimous uh <laughs> <laughs> not not mogamous nognanimous nognanimous i don't know we'll be back with more of your uh texts there gotta, are some brilliant ones coming in plus we've got to figure out what our theme for song wars is yes yeah. we've we got to okay. figure that out if you've got any suggestions do email adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk uh, someone, in fact, people say, um, this is the last thing I'm going to say about Song Wars this week, but uh, when we played that Sparks track earlier on, mm. everyone <laughs> thought that that was a Song Wars. I wonder if they used a bit of Garage Band on there, because they I, were... I, Apparently they spent a lot of money on equipment. Here we go. Do you know how much I spent <laughs> on that keyboard? <laughs> how much? £200. How much did you spend wow. on your Chaosolator? £100. Oh, pathetic. It says um, it all. Okay. Plugs, uh, we've no. got for you. No. The Breeders. Oh, this is the Breeders. Yeah, the Breeders are in town this week. I'm going to go and see them. And they're being supported by the marvellous Jim Noir. Uh, they're at Coco on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I think. I might go along on Thursday, I think. Can't wait to see them. Never seen them live before. And this is one of my favourite Breeders tracks from The Last Splash. I wonder if they'll play it. This is Driving On Nine. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Was Dex he f the nation? Sorry, mate. Was he fixing his bicycle at the end of that last track? Yeah, he was. He got he got all chain came off. He caught a little bit of his 
um, <laughs> a bit of his body in the chain. Did he? he? That's why he was squealing. Oh, ow. So he was really He had to flip there. it upside down and take the chain off. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that was Cold War Kids with Hang Me Up to Dry. And, uh, of course, before that, you heard The Breeders with Driving on Nine. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, and we are in the midst of Text the Nation, the nation's favourite feature. It's very exciting. Uh, this week's one is... It, it is very exciting. That sounded insincere. Also, I sounded sincere when I said the nation's favourite feature. This, <laughs> that's not sincere. <laughs> There's no way it's, it's not the nation's, the nation's favourite feature. feature. Yeah. Carry on. Um, the... the oh, I'm confused now. The subject is challenge documentaries challenge similar documentaries. to what dave gorman does and also morgan spurlock and all that those type of people yeah. they set themselves challenges that are supposed to illuminate some aspect of society or life and then go about doing them and filming them and we all watch them some of them are good some of them are stupid tom jolly's doing a new series that uh, looks a little bit similar like he's basically uh, messing with shall we say uh, people that cause annoyance like traffic right. wardens and clampers and people like that right so he's going up. Oh, that sounds a bit petty to he's me. He's giving them a taste of their own medicine, you know? Really? Yeah. I'm I'd right. like a series in which traffic wardens give Dom Jolly a taste of their medicine. What, you, what's your, are you like pro traffic warden now all of a sudden? Uh, a, I'm a little. I think they're in a difficult position. I'm not, I'm, I'm not pro that counts. We don't want to get into this. It's turning into some sort of breakfast show on yeah, uh, but here's my a point. political <laughs> station. Okay. Here's the, here's my point on your point, right? Mm. <laughs> That, I can't argue with that. Right, that's Listen, these word. texts, though, uh, are you go ready to go into commissioning editing mode again? Yes. All right, here's one from Dog Boy in Kent. I would like to spend a month of my life trying to make as many people cry as possible. At least five a day should do. And that is, he hasn't written what that's exposing, but I'm guessing that's exposing how fragile people are. How fragile we are. That would are. be the theme song. That could be the theme. Commission? Uh, no, I'm not commissioning that dog boy. We've already got a couple of shows like that. Right, most of them are like that. In the world. Designed, yeah. yeah, to make the audience cry. Uh, here's one from Keith in Plymouth. I'll be walking from the Hook of Holland to Helsinki wearing only a neck brace, looking straight forward all the time, in order to gauge Scandinavian opinion on the importance of eye contact. No, I'm not commissioning that. That's good. Why? <laughs> He's looking forward. <laughs> looking forward. The whole time. And not making eye contact. T contact, contact with anybody i don't know what contact means i do it's a new one <laughs> here's one from <laughs> tom amazing. this is one of my favorite ones yeah uh, tom tact that's what it means it's when tom touches you mm. it's the word i've just had uh tom tact uh every time you see someone smaller than you you have to leapfrog over them <laughs> that uh, is brilliant that must be idea. some kind of student game that students play when they're drunk do you remember a guy called neviaski at our school i do yeah he conrad used to, he used to do that kind of thing did he yeah did he uh what would that illuminate what would that achieve what would that show it would put down the smallies it would it would it would show that small people are good for something yeah and the uh, entertainment of again you could people. you could have uh the randy newman track short people on yeah. there as the theme exactly you could just uh say that short people should be employed as bollards <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm going to be when i um grow up get fired Really, a yeah, bollard. A bollard, because I'm. You'll be very good at that. I'm quite short myself. So uh, uh, someone's texted in. This is a. This is an interesting one. Why not live on pure logic, like John Fox from Ultravox did for a whole year? What's he now? What's the here? story? That's what I want to know. What's the story? How do you live on pure logic? And what did John Fox from Ultravox actually do? Is there a synthesizer called Logic? Maybe. Well, there's a music program, but that was not in... It's an anonymous text. Do, do explain yourself, if anybody knows what that person's talking Pure about. Pure logic. Here's another one from Daryl in London. Uh, London's a big city in the south of England. Starting with the letter A, he's going to eat only food that begins with A for two weeks, then change to B, then C, etc., for 52 weeks. That's a very good idea. I'm commissioning that. Alphabet food. Why? I, I just like it because it's, uh, it teaches you the alphabet. Is, is the alphabet good for you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's asking exactly is it nutritious it's uh, listen it's sort of saying uh, it maybe would start with a survey saying almost all kids in britain don't know their own alphabet yes this is a disgrace yes or how to eat proper exactly it wouldn't matter if it wasn't true it's just a place to start yeah it could be a question exactly uh here's another one from an anonymous person it starts simply pegs exclamation mark see how many pegs you can steal from people's gardens would they care Hosted by Simon Pegg. <laughs> Hosted by Simon Pegg. Uh, that could be very good, couldn't it? Theme music Pegg by Spe Steely Dan. Commissioning that? Yes. 
<laughs> Here's another one from Jimmy in Manchester. Idea for Doco entitled Man's Best Friend. I have to survive in an inner city for one month with no money, no organised shelter and Did no you say Man's Blessed Friend? Best. I may have said blessed by accident. Okay. Uh, well, I thought that'd be a good name for a show. Man's best friend. No organised shelter, no possessions, only a dog costume. I will not be able to remove the costume, but must use it in order to survive, relying on only the kindness of strangers. I will not be allowed to communicate using words, only dog-like barks, stroke woofs. Perhaps moving to a new city each month to compare different nations' attitudes. Well, then you'd have <laughs> to move to a different nation. <laughs> Wouldn't you, Jimmy? Uh, that's good, though, isn't it? Do dog suit woof, It woofs. sort of relies on the fact that people would be fooled into thinking that Jimmy dressed in a dog very suit realistic dog is suit. actually a dog. <laughs> very realistic dog suit. A real and dog. And Jimmy is very good at those bark stroke woofs. Like, uh... Commission? Uh, yes, I am. I am going to commission that <laughs> That's one. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but, but I'm going to get McIntyre to do it, though. Right. Yeah, you know, under cover of a dog suit. Right. He's going to do that. Let's have one more That's and then play some uh, more music. I've got some yeah. mark in my locker for you in a second. I would spend a year telling everyone to F off. It would be a searing study of one man's descent into loneliness and misery because he was so rude. Well, that's says David in Leeds. That's Gordon Ramsay, isn't it? It's true. That's that's his he's entire done very well by it. Exactly. That proves nothing. Uh, uh, keep those texts and emails coming in. And we do apologise, you know, if you email us, maybe even on a regular basis, and it seems like we never read them out. But uh, we do get a lot of texts and emails, all of which we very much appreciate, and we try and get round to all of them as We as do read them all. Possible. Yeah, that's true. So if you've sent in something rude and are angry we haven't read it out, don't worry, it will have scarred us in an unspoken way. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for those unfavourable comparisons to Mitchell and Webb. Um, now, here's Money Mark with Hand in Your Head. Money Mark with Hand in Your Head. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for the news, read by Rachel Matthews, and the music news, read by Elizabeth Olker. Foo Fighters, with Cheer Up Boys, your makeup's running. Another thing I saw on telly in uh, Holland, in Amsterdam, was a station where... Uh, they, it's just a, a, a sort of webcam in a radio station right. all day. Have you seen that channel? No. Someone, someone listening in Holland might know it. it it's just basically a, a, a radio studio, and you hear the records they play, yeah. and then you just see the DJs picking their noses, mm -hmm. setting the next record up on the computer. Occasionally a group of school kids will come into the studio and watch <laughs> and then shuffle out. <laughs> That's it. Howard Stern used to do that same sort of thing, though, didn't he? There's a little more going on in his show, perhaps. Perhaps. You know, what with the boobs and the <laughs> stuff like that. In All this right. one, there's nothing happening. No. It's weirdly compelling, though. Well, exactly. It's like Big Brother, though, isn't it? It's like Big Brother. It's a little less happening than no, that, it's, even. It's exactly like Big Brother. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, it's it is. exactly the same as Big Brother, except without all the birds and train noises that they have to play mm. when someone says something mm. sensitive. Mm. Instead, you get great music. So Everybody it's terrific, wins. Terrific idea. So I think it's better than Big Brother. Yeah. Now, have you seen, um, speaking of TV, I don't know if you ever watch TV. Sometimes. It's amazing. Have you seen the ad, I think it's for Clearasil, maybe, where there's a mum and she sat on the sofa stroke couch uh, showing a photo album to a boyfriend. We're assuming it's a boyfriend. He's sat in between uh, this mum, and on the other side of the boyfriend is presumably his girlfriend, presumably the mum's the daughter. daughter, right? right. And the uh, mum is saying, oh, and here she is, naked in the bath. And the, suddenly the girl says, you should see me now. Right? Mm. And then the mum says, no. Is it dubbed? Is it? Is it one of those languages? No, it's that's in not a foreign language. I, I think. I think it's American. I might be wrong. I might have wow, filed it what incorrectly. What happens next? Uh, and the girl goes, "Uh huh." But I don't understand what's going on in the ad. Like, what is the emotional dynamic? What's it got to do with Clearasil? Uh, because she's so her skin is so great. You get spots on the face, though, don't you? Well, you, you wouldn't have thought you needed to be naked in the bath to see them. That sounds very confusing. It's very odd. I don't get it. You know, I mean, obviously there is. The, the, a certain amount of it is the embarrassment that the boyfriend is feeling. He's sandwiched between the mother and the girlfriend. Obviously, he has had intimate uh, access to this woman's daughter. Mm. I'm talking about the mother there. And, um, you know, so it's strange. What, what? Well, what are I... you suggesting is happening? What kind of a family is this? <laughs> no, but you see what I'm saying, though, right? No. <laughs> well, look. I've got a very sexy scene now in my head. <laughs> There's the boyfriend. Clear all over the shop. The boyfriend is on the couch. Gonna need to dry clean that so. He's got his girlfriend sitting to his 
left. Yeah. On his right is his girlfriend's Yeah, no, mother. I understand the scene. Right. But who's had intimate access to what? The boyfriend has had intimate access to the girlfriend. Right. right? Okay. Who is the daughter of the woman showing him baby right. photos. Right. right, right, So the mum is saying, look, oh, isn't she cute? There she was in the bath. And then the girl sort of, she's sort of a little bit embarrassed yeah. by this. She's like, don't but show him why the baby. why does she say... Exactly. Why does she say, you should see me now? What's she trying to do to her mum? Her whole body's covered in spots. <laughs> <laughs> that's the key and she's saying you've neglected to make wash me in right. clearasil give me those clearasil baths exactly. other spot things are available yeah spot <laughs> cleansing things but and, and so the mum says no sounds like it's taking monosyllabic parent child communication skills to a new level and the girl says uh-huh Lots of families communicate like that these days, right. don't they? Mom, uh, well, whatever, is it? Bye. <laughs> That's, for instance, a conversation about uh, Zimbabwe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so maybe it's a language we don't speak anymore. You know the ad, though, right? No, I haven't seen it. Have I'm excited it? about it. Have you seen it, Jude? No. Oh, man. That's depressing when you when because <laughs> when I see you fantasize. I, when feel you as if I've, I feel as if I've seen it a lot. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm watching the wrong uh, stations. I'm going to watch out for it. I bet you will see it, and we'll we'll discuss it more next week. I'm and if you've seen it, please tell us what you think's going on. The Spot Channel. No, because it is hard. I was hoping you might have seen it. Because then what are we talking about now? I'm just concluding that little item right. of chat. It's tricky to figure out what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it is hard if you haven't seen it. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> now we're going to wrap up Text the Nation after this next piece of music, but this is Modest Mouse. The Modest Mouse with Ocean Breathe Salty. Modest Mouse with Ocean Breathe Salty. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's time to conclude Text the Nation. <laughs> Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Is it time for that jingle to be freshened up? I was just thinking that. Yeah, a re some yeah. sort of a remix. Revamp, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that all right? I'll get on to it. Thanks, man. Well done. Okay, thank you very much to everybody who sent in their ideas. We've had a, lots and lots of really good ideas, and unfortunately we won't have time to read them all. But here's some of the cream of the crop. I'm going to go through them quickly. Are you ready, Mr. Commissioning Editor? Yes, I am. It's important times for the listeners. There could be some shows going ahead now. Mm. Um, Simon in Bristol says, Hello, Adam and Joe. As a challenge, Doc, I would travel around Britain wearing a bobble hat and sturdy boots. Uh, no. Why not? Why? Why? He, he, he's kind of underdone it. Bobble hat and sturdy boots? Yeah, it's the archetypal British uh, kind of yomper, right? No, I'm not having that on my You're channel. not having that? I like that. No. I'd have that, Simon. Uh, here's another one from Dave in Catford. The Bermuda Triangle, the truth is the name of his. Mm. I row into that area with a rope attached. When the triangle makes me disappear, the Navy SEALs follow the rope to trace me. That's <laughs> not really a challenge, Doc, though, is great. it? that's great. That's yes. just a one-off thing. Uh, no, it's a, do it's a doc. It's a stunt. It doesn't have to be a series. It's a stunt. Oh, it's good. It's, it's good. It's a stunt in the same way that, like, searching for Nessie is a stunt. Uh, yeah, well, it is a stunt. It's yeah, not a challenge, Doc, though, I wouldn't say. Oh, you it's, mean he's not challenging values within himself? It's not a journey as such, you know? Most Dave, of the, I like that as well. The best Dave Gorman jo uh, docs take you on a journey of some kind. But that's a journey into the Bermuda Triangle with a rope round. I like anything when anyone's got a rope tied around them. Fair enough. Poltergeist, the mist. Yeah. I like going into a frightening <laughs> area with, <laughs> with a rope tied round one. Yeah. Uh, here's another one from George Stottard. Stothard? Stothart, not sure. Subject, the sweet corn challenge. Whilst living in a van in New Zealand, two friends of mine decided to embark on the sweet corn challenge. They'd been told that if you ate sweet corn and nothing else for a week, eventually you'd pass a reformed corn on the cob, <laughs> as you weren't fully able to digest the corn. I didn't buy it, but watching them shoveling in sweet corn with horrible hangovers in the rain was hilarious. My other friend and I made a conscious effort to eat the tastiest food in front of them while they were doing the challenge. It didn't work. They gave up after two uncomfortable corn-filled days. What well, George has slightly stymied his chances by telling us the outcome of the <laughs> corn challenge. Yeah. No, I'm not having that on my channel. What is this, some kind of lavatory show? You know, because what's the ultimate payoff is you get to see... Phew, it doesn't bear thinking about it. No, 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 no. <laughs> not for all. It's with Classy Channel I'm running. I, st I thought about it. Well, now you've thought what about you it. you would see. Exactly. And I've got so it move head. on. Okay, here's one from Jean-Pierre. Uh, my documentary would be to challenge the Acme-made theory that if you dig down far enough, you will dig through to Australia. Hmm. At the very least, we dig down far enough to find out if it was impossible and or too hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too hot now. I'm going back. I'm going back. 
I've gone down about six or seven feet and I am sweaty and dirty and I am going home. Two more? Yes. Keith Trevis. Uh, here is his idea. He thinks that there should be a follow-up to Andrew Lloyd Webber's incessant um, casting his musical shows, a controversial uh, presence in the BBC Saturday evening schedule. Is it? Nancy. Uh, Nancy, will you be my Nancy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got a better idea. How about a nationwide competition to become a member of The Fall? Each week, contestants would have to pull lots of extreme indie stunts, playing in pubs, living in transit vans, giving the show a celebrity edge. West End stars could appear on the show to sing fall hits. Imagine Michael Ball singing Fiery Jack, or Elaine Page performing The Man Whose Head Expanded. <laughs> the show could culminate with the contestants fighting with Marky e. Smith on stage. Last one <laughs> standing idea. is in. What do you think? Cheers, I like Keith. It. That's very good, Keith. I like that, man. Marky e. Smith is not on TV nearly enough. I it's mean, true. he is. An, He's you're... always value for money when always. you manage to drag him in front of a camera. Always be uh, there was a very funny interview that um, Frank Skinner did with him for the Culture Show, in fact, because he's a recent convert to the world of the fall. Yeah. And it was very uncomfortable, and and uh, Smith didn't really have time, and, and Skinner was absolutely fawning over uh, Marky Smith. Marky Smith doesn't like that. No, doesn't There's mean. a clip of him trying to suffocate me with a plastic bag on YouTube. That's right. It was, a, it was a difficult afternoon. Good idea, though. I like that one. But here's uh, my favourite one. Hi, Adam and Joe. This is from Mark Thomas. He's texted us in before, I think. Uh, he says, Thomas. who knows? We always say that. Hi, Adam and Joe. Our idea is a show. He says it's our idea, so I should credit Gail as well, Mark and Gail mm. in Ayrshire. Our idea is a show where someone would live on the back of U2's guitarist for a month and could only have food that they managed to snatch out of his hand. It would be called <laughs> Living go. on the Edge. There we go. Uh, that's good. I like that. I'm commissioning that. Because the go. Edge is well up for anything like that. He is. <laughs> what would that prove, though? What would it prove? Uh... <laughs> they're piggybacking that they're, they're clinging to the edges back oh and they can not... only eat food that they snatch out of his hand on right, the way to his right. mouth it's not about the edge uh, per se it's about any guitarist i'd say it's about third world nations having to piggyback from the from the wealth of first world nations do you You've know read more into it than i did well it's important i thought it was mainly subtext. about guitarists no Oh. Commission? Yes. Yes! <laughs> well, we've got lots of these underway. The BBC is going to be wall-to-wall -wall challenge documentaries in the next few months. We're fixing up the BBC, man. We're mending it. Imagine if we really did have the power to commission all programmes on the BBC. It couldn't... We know, because we couldn't do a worse job than that. What are you saying? <laughs> How dare you? I'm joking. I'm just joking. I'm only joking. It's Maybe we'd be allowed BBC Three. You could take over BBC Three. Surely, come on. That's got some As problems. An thing. It's very good a lot of the time. It's brilliant. It does have some one or two problems. It's the best channel. There it is. Um, now, it's, uh, <laughs> this is one of your tracks, Joe, right? You is it? Yeah. This is a, a, a little bit of uh, R&B stuff. Is it r and B? I I don't know. It's a soulful one by a band called Sweet Sable. Um, and it came out in, like, 92, I think. It's got an Eddie Kendrick sample on it. Uh, it's called Old Time's Sake. That's nice, isn't it? Groovy, I'm grooving. Thanks, man. That's Sweet Sable. Uh, very nice. Uh, some Old drug, Time's Sake, that's Drug cool. references in there. Absolutely not, no. Uh, blunt? What's a blunt? No, a blunt is just a very poorly p uh, sharpened implement. <laughs> <laughs> if we find out there's drug references in there, then you, Joe Cornish, are out of the big British castle. They are talking about smoking legal highs. Are they? Yeah, herbal highs. You can get them in Camden High Street. They're perfectly legal and, boy, woo! Might be about James Blunt, I suppose. Yeah, that's what it's about. Listen, thank you very much for listening and to everyone who's texted and emailed. Next week's Song Wars, we picked a theme. Are we going to go with this theme? Festivals. Yeah, Nick Muldoon, he's in Los Angeles. He suggested we do songs to celebrate the start of the festival season, so songs about what it's like to be at a festival uh, so we're going to go with that for song wars next week good idea yeah thank you very much indeed for listening thanks for texting and emailing uh we really mu uh, very much appreciate it don't forget to download the podcast it'll be out a new one uh tomorrow evening uh, after about uh, 6 p.m and of course you can listen again to the show anytime during the week on the bbc six music website liz kershaw is coming up have a great week tutty bye 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 <laughs>